For the second time in just four days, one of Notre Dame's most important players underwent surgery that could cause him to miss significant time. And that's not great, Bob. You are Locked On Irish, your daily podcast on the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up and welcome into another edition of Locked On Irish, your daily Notre Dame podcast. Today is Wednesday, March 27th, and thank you for making this your first listen of the day. I'm Tyler Wojcik and I'm the host. I'm a Notre Dame alum and producer covering college football for Fox Sports. And you can watch this show on YouTube or you can listen wherever you get your podcast. For those of you watching along on YouTube, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Or if you're listening to the podcast, please take a moment, rate the show five stars, leave a review, and of course, subscribe. Unfortunately... I'm going to spend today's episode talking about an injury to one of Notre Dame's best players for the second time in as many days. I spent yesterday's show talking about Riley Leonard's second ankle surgery and the impact that could have on him, the quarterback room, and of course the offense. And now today we've got to talk about cornerback Benjamin Morrison because he underwent shoulder surgery on Monday. There's really no way to sugarcoat it. This is another tough break for the Irish, and even though it might not end up being that bad for Notre Dame in the long term. You just never want to have one of your best players go through something like this, especially two of your best players in a four-day span, and that is exactly what Notre Dame is dealing with right now. So let's start off with what we know about the situation, and to be honest with you, it's not a whole lot, okay? So this is uh, from the Notre Dame football PR team. They tweeted this out on Tuesday at 10 a.m. Quote, Junior quarterback Benjamin Morrison underwent successful arthroscopic surgery on his right shoulder Monday, March 25th, with Dr. Brian Radigan. Morrison is expected to return for the 2024 football season, end quote. So when I first read that, I had a lot of stuff going through my head. On one hand, there's the glass half full approach when you focus on the part where it says arthroscopic surgery, because WebMD defines arthroscopy as, quote, a surgical procedure doctors use to look at, diagnose, and treat problems inside a a joint. It is a minor surgery and is done on an outpatient basis, which means you can go home the same day. Minor surgery sounds pretty good. That would probably mean that Benjamin Morrison is not out for uh, for that long of a time. But then there's that last line. Why do they say expected to return for the 2024 football season. Like, that is so vague. Does that mean there's a chance that he doesn't return? Or does that mean he will return, but it might not be until midseason? Like, I thought it was interesting that they didn't say expected to be ready by the start of the season or anything like that. I I think it's purposely ambiguous, as my friend Jake Holwig used to say, Marcus Freeman is probably, actually, no, it's not probably, he's definitely going to be asked to provide more details about Morrison's situation and his recovery time at his next press conference. But until then, we don't really know that much about the situation. We don't even know when or how it happened. As a matter of fact, I'm really confused about when it happened because Albert Hill, a cornerback prospect from Akron, Ohio, goes to Archbishop Hoban. He was on campus this weekend for a recruiting visit, and he posted a picture from Notre Dame's practice on Saturday. And in that picture, you can see Benjamin Morrison suited up with the rest of the defensive backs on the practice field. Now, he's not participating in practice. They're sort of just all together in a uh, circle uh, with their arms wrapped around one another. But still, it's like, okay, well, it looks like he was healthy enough to practice on Saturday but he underwent this surgery on Monday. So there's a lot of questions there. And again, this is all going to be answered by Marcus Freeman in the coming days. But the one thing that I I don't think we're going to get an answer about is how long his recovery is going to be because shoulders, they're kind of weird in that way. Um, Not all recoveries are the same. And I think the one positive here is that it does say an arthroscopic surgery. So I think it's a little bit minor. It doesn't say torn labrum or anything like what Tyler Buckner dealt with when it was like a grade four AC joint sprain. I think I might be butchering that, but that was a much more serious injury and you kind of knew it immediately. And there was even Logan Dix who dealt with a torn labrum uh, in in the spring game a couple years ago, and he ended up having a good season, but his recovery time was pretty long. So right now, the only thing we know is that this is a big loss because Morrison is one of, if not the best player on the entire team. 
He had nine interceptions in the past two seasons, plus he had 15 passes deflected. Last year, opponents targeted him 51 times, and he allowed just 25 receptions for 279 yards. Those are elite numbers for a coverage cornerback. Plus, he's a good tackler, especially for a corner. He finished with 24 last year. He's very physical, and he is just a very special player. I think he's the best cornerback Notre Dame has had in my lifetime, and I think he was about to have the, his best season yet. And as a matter of fact, he could still end up having having his best season yet but this is definitely a setback the thing is right now considering there's so much that we don't know about the situation in his recovery time I think there are three possible outcomes in this situation I'm going to go over all of them in today's episode like I said even when Marcus Freeman talks we still might not get complete clarity on his recovery time so let's look at all the different outcomes here for Morrison and his recovery and how it's going to impact the rest of the secondary and the defense as a whole So let's start with the best case scenario, right? This is the stuff that we're all pretty much hoping for here. So let's say Benjamin Morrison, it's a minor surgery. He's out for, say, three months. That means he's going to miss all of spring practice, spends the early part of the summer rehabbing, and then he's back in the field uh, for practice at the start of fall camp. In this uh, this situation, he would not miss any games. He's full go by the season opener. And obviously, you would prefer to have Morrison on the field in spring practice as opposed to recovering from an injury because I don't think these practices are meaningless. I don't think they're as meaningful as they are for the guys behind him like Christian Gray, Jaden Mickey, Clarence Lewis, and even Micah Bell, who now factors into that cornerback rotation more than he ever has since he got on campus. It's not meaningless, but I still think that Benjamin Morrison is going to be just fine without getting a bunch of reps in spring practice. It actually reminded me of when Kyle Hamilton had ankle surgery following the 2020 season, which caused him to be out for most, if not all, of spring practice in 2021. And he still came out of that uh, ready to go. And he had a great start to the season before he got injured, uh, before he injured his knee against USC about halfway through that season. Like no one was really talking about uh, Kyle Hamilton's ankle at the start of that season. So, Even though you wish Morrison were out there, I think that guys like Gray, Mickey Lewis, and Bell are going to benefit greatly from the additional reps that they're going to get in Morrison's absence. I think this gives Christian Gray an opportunity to work more at the boundary corner, which is likely where he's going to start next season once Morrison departs for the NFL. I think everyone understands that even though Christian Gray is fighting for that field cornerback spot this year with Jane Mickey, his future, at least at Notre Dame, is at the boundary corner. And then there's Jane Mickey, who is probably going to get the bulk of the reps at the field corner now, and he has a great chance to prove that he belongs out there as a starter and not Christian Gray, even if Christian Gray is on the field at the same time. Like, I think this really adds a new element to that competition, which I said on a podcast a couple weeks ago. I think the battle between Mickey and Gray is one of the most intriguing position battles on the entire team. And now they're both going to have, uh, have a chance to showcase their skills on the field, but Mickey is going to be at the position that he's probably going to be playing more this year and the rest of his career. Then there's Clarence Lewis, who all of a sudden, the fact that he came back is more important than ever. And now I feel like Notre Dame's got to be really happy that they have a veteran guy like him who has experience playing big games at the cornerback position. And I think he's going to get some reps at boundary. That's what he played at the start of his career when he was seeing significant, uh, seeing significant playing time as a true freshman and sophomore before he got beat out by Benjamin Morrison at the start of the 2022 season. He's got plenty of experience, and I think that you can trust him out there against the majority of the opponents on Notre Dame's schedule. Do you want him out there going up against teams like Ohio State or Georgia? Obviously not, but Notre Dame can cross that bridge when they get there. If this scenario happens, and again, it's a big if, if Morrison's injury does not keep him out that long and only ends up being three months, it could almost end up being a net positive for Notre Dame, assuming you still get Morrison at 100% at the start of the season because the guys behind Morrison are going to develop a lot more than they would if Morrison were out there because they're getting extra reps, because they're playing with the rest of the starters, because they are going to be going up against Notre Dame's best receivers in practice. So Rarely are injuries a good thing, and I am not ready to say that this is a good thing. I'm just saying that over time, 
if things work out well for Notre Dame, this could have a positive effect on the guys uh, in that cornerback room not named Benjamin Morrison because obviously this is a setback for Morrison and he doesn't have all the reps that he would want to truly master his technique and take his game to another level because I already think he's one of the best cornerbacks in all of college football. If he came into the season with like a full off season under his belt ready to go, I think he could end up having one of the best seasons any quarterback at Notre Dame has ever had. And there's still a chance it might happen, but I think it's a little bit less, li- less likely now that he suffered this injury. Again, he could still get to that point, but usually it takes some uh, guys some time before they completely reacclimate and play at 100%. So that is the best case scenario, right? That's the one we're all hoping for. But we also have to consider what could happen to the defense if Morrison's recovery lasts a little bit longer and ends up siding, sidelining him closer to the start of the 2024 season. That's next. Today's episode is brought to you by Better Together. Tired of the same old daily fantasy grind where you make a roster, cross your fingers, and hope for the best? Or are you tired of losing in the last leg of your pick entry? Introducing Better Together, the first cooperative daily fantasy platform where teamwork triumphs talent and you can play with your friends, not against them. Pick more or less on real-time player stats, strategize with your partner to boost your odds, and climb the leaderboard together. So grab a friend and join the social daily fantasy movement. Download Better Together now from the App Store and sign up using promo code locked on for a free $5 entry into any NCAA basketball contest. Remember the code locked on because winning alone is fun, but it's better together. Today's episode is also brought to you by Amazon Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports, from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV also offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs, as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing television. And it provides access to millions of movies and television episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big professional leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels lets you dive into all of the game analysis, highlights, and more to stay up to date on all the latest in the world of sports, not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, and cooking videos as well. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com. Dot com slash locked on fire TV. All right, so now that we've covered the best case scenario with Benjamin Morrison's shoulder surgery, let's look at what I'm going to call the not ideal but not terrible scenario. In this instance, Benjamin Morrison is out for the entire summer and he ends up coming back right at the start of the regular season. This would be about a five month, maybe even six month uh, recovery time for Morrison, which seems like a lot. But still, you never really know with shoulder surgeries or things like that. Um, I don't necessarily think this is the most likely scenario. I think it's the best case scenario that I went over, but I think this is definitely second. Um, It could probably go either way here. Morrison would basically be sidelined for all of summer workouts. He could still obviously do stuff with his legs, get some conditioning in and things like that. And I think he'd be ramping up for the season while the team is in full camp. Uh, fall camp, excuse me. Like he'd probably be out there maybe just without any contact or anything like that. And that does leave the door open for Morrison to miss the season opener against Texas A&M, or at the very least, he wouldn't be 100%. That is obviously cause for concern because even though Texas A&M is in their first year under head coach Mike Elko and they lost a lot of guys in the transfer portal, it's still going into a hostile environment in the season opener. You want someone like Benjamin Morrison, someone who is a great player, someone who's plenty experienced, and someone you can rely upon in that kind of environment and in that kind of situation because the guys behind him, like Gray and Mickey, uh, even though you've got Clarence Lewis in there, uh, Mickey and Gray, they just have not really had as much experience on that stage. So that would obviously not be great for Notre Dame, but a lot of the se- uh, a lot of the stuff that I said in segment one still applies because the guys behind him, like Gray, Mickey, Lewis, and Mike Bell, they would get all the reps throughout the spring, and they would get a lot of reps in fall camp as well that they uh, otherwise would not have gotten. And I think something that is uh, definitely needs to be emphasized here is that Mike Mickens is an excellent cornerbacks coach, and now he's the coach for all of the defensive backs after Chris O'Leary left to take the job with the Chargers. So that does bring a sense of comfort into this entire uh, situation for Notre Dame because you can trust the fact that Mike Mickens is going to get these guys ready to play uh, to the best of their ability. The problem is their best just 
isn't as good as Benjamin Morrison's, and that's okay. Benjamin Morrison's best is better than pretty much every other cornerback in college football. He is just that special. But credit to Mickens, this is where all of that extra time spent recruiting and get more talent in the room and get more depth. Like all of that has a chance to really showcase itself in you know in what could be the summer, it could be in fall, it could be at the start of the season for Notre Dame if Morrison ends up being out a little bit longer than we anticipate. The coaching staff is going to have to figure out, though, how do they want to utilize Christian Gray? Because right now, we all thought he was going to be playing, or at least competing to play, at the field corner spot this season, starting opposite Benjamin Morrison. But if Morrison is going to be out and Gray is getting some more reps at boundary, that means he's not going to be getting as many reps at field corner. And in this case, Morrison would eventually come back. So then do they want to cross-train Gray? at boundary and the field so that once Morrison comes back, then Gray can make the switch over to field corner. But then maybe in that instance, um, Jane Mickey had really solidified himself as the starter. So I think the distribution of the reps and where they're go, uh, where they're coming from is going to be something that Mike Mickens and really the entire defensive staff is going to have to figure out if Morrison ends up missing more extended period of time. Al Golden is also probably going to have to adjust how he calls the defense, especially if Morrison ends up missing a game or two at the start of the year, because you just can't really play man coverage as much without Morrison out there locking down the boundary receiver. With the NFL draft coming up, I've seen a lot of highlights of Marvin Harrison Jr. and a lot of highlights of him going up against Benjamin Morrison in that uh, fateful game in Notre Dame Stadium. And you could see in the All-22 that Notre Dame felt very comfortable putting Benjamin Morrison out there on an island with Marvin Harrison Jr., who I believe is the best um, receiver in college football last season. And I think he's going to be probably the best receiver in the NFL in like a few years. I just think that highly of him. The fact that Benjamin Morrison was on an island and played as well as he did against Marvin Harrison Jr. is an unbelievable accomplishment. And it also provides just a bunch of different options for Al Golden and what he wants to do. Because when you have that kind of trust in a cornerback out there against a top receiver, you can get way more aggressive in the blitz packages. You can do exotic stuff with the safeties and you can kind of cover other holes and other weaknesses in the defense because you have so much trust in Morrison. And that's not to say that he doesn't trust the guys behind him at all. He's just not going to trust them as much. He can't be as exotic. He can't be as aggressive if Benjamin Morrison is not out there. I think he'd probably have to be a little bit more conservative across the board uh, until Morrison comes back, even if Gray and Mickey really start to ascend with these additional reps. I think, you know, in this scenario, Morrison would likely return to the team at some point in September. I don't really think uh, it's going to take him out that long. Now, it could if, you know, there are more setbacks. And we'll get to that in segment three. That's the worst case scenario. But in this case, Morrison comes back. He's around the team in the start of September. He might need a few games to ramp up. But the game that I'm really focusing on here is September 28th against Louisville. Notre Dame has a tricky game uh, on September 14th against Purdue. And I say tricky just because it's at Purdue and Notre Dame just has a weird history with Purdue. I'm probably going to say that a lot this season. I'm just kind of dreading that game because the Purdue game is just always weird, especially in September. I think Notre Dame could absolutely be fine against Purdue without him and, and uh, Northern Illinois. They'll be great. But I don't know, man. Louisville, I'm obviously very scared to play them again, especially after what happened last year when Notre Dame just got smacked by them at Louisville. Now, obviously, the difference this year is that it's a home game for Notre Dame, but Jeff Brom is a really, really smart offensive mind. Louisville has been extremely active in the transfer portal, so much so that I don't even know who is on their offense just yet. I haven't really started my preseason scouting report of all of Notre Dame's opponents yet, considering it's still March and there's still a lot more movement to be made, uh, especially in the spring transfer portal cycle. But that is sort of the game that I'm looking at if Morrison ends up missing some time and ends up missing the start of that uh, start of the season. Because obviously you want him back for the Texas A&M game. But look, if it's just not possible, if he doesn't get to practice at all, you don't want to just throw him out there in the season opener on what's probably going to be a scorching hot day in College Station. So This is something that Notre Dame could potentially have to prepare for, and I feel like if this is the case, if Morrison does need a little bit more time, they should be concerned with just getting him back and ready to go uh, for that game against Louisville because I think uh, they'll be all right. They could survive those first few games, even though you definitely want him out there against Texas A&M. It's that Louisville game where like, all right, 
Now we're getting into the season. Now you really want him out there so that he's not just ready to play in this game, but so that he can get back to being himself and be full go by the middle point of the season when things really start getting tougher and other guys are likely going to start getting hurt as well. It's just the nature of the sport and as unfortunate as it is, the fact that Notre Dame uh, lost Benjamin Morrison or the fact that he had to go through this surgery, like, it's just kind of part of the game, man. So as frustrating as it is and uh, as unfortunate as the timing is because the Riley Leonard thing just happened a few days ago, it's a reality, right? And I think the coaching staff understands that. It's unfortunate, but this is adversity. Every single team is going to have to deal with it as the season goes along and as the offseason goes along, and this is just another challenge that Notre Dame is going to have to deal with. But I think in this situation, again, it's not ideal, it's not terrible, and I think that Notre Dame will be okay in this situation. But that's just another one, right? Not great, not terrible. Now we have to consider the worst and figure out just how bad would that really be. That's next. This week's March Madness Bracket Highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest. Just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs, these guys were able to take it to the next level. The NC State Wolfpack are obviously this week's Nissan Rogue. This team surprised us all with powerful performances in their first two games in the NCAA tournament, and wins over Texas Tech and Oakland have them set up to play Marquette in the Sweet 16. They say, win life, go Rogue, and that's exactly what the Wolfpack have done. Take the Nissan Rogue, the Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. This episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors is everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash with all the parts you need at the prices you want it's easy to turn your car into the mvp and bring home that win keep your ride or die alive at ebay.com slash motors ebay guaranteed fit only available to u.s customers eligible items only exclusions apply all right i saved it for the end but we got to talk about it the potential worst case scenario for benjamin morrison and his shoulder injury i think in this case morrison would be out five to six months from the initial surgery as he recovers and as he goes through rehab but along the way, he deals with some sort of a setback, which, you know, it happens sometimes uh, with shoulder surgeries, and he misses at least a chunk of the regular season. The good news is the cornerbacks behind Morrison have plenty of time to get ready for that moment because they have all of spring, they have all of summer, and they have all of fall camp, like I mentioned earlier. This wouldn't really catch them by surprise. And again, having a guy like Mike Mickens coaching that secondary makes you feel a lot better about getting the young guys ready to go. And we know that these guys are more talented than they've been in the past because of how good of a recruiter Mike Mickens has been. But still, the defense, and specifically the secondary, is not going to be the strength that we thought it would be if Morrison is out because Morrison is just that good of a player. He is so special, and he affects what Al Golden is trying to do. It's going to affect how offenses try to attack Notre Dame. And if he's just out, I don't think you know the, the equation is the same. How you use Gray is different. Mickey's probably just locked into that field corner spot. Gray's probably working at boundary. Is he ready to handle that at this stage in his career? There are a lot of questions that would need to be answered for Notre Dame if Morrison is going to miss an extended period of time that cuts into the start of the 2024 regular season. I also have to think this could impact the young linebackers and how they perform because Al Golden is probably going to have to resort to playing zone coverage a little bit more than he would if Morrison was out there uh, or even if he knew that Morrison was going to come back. I think he's got to totally adjust his defensive philosophy uh, so that these younger guys, they're not just going to be blitzing and they can't just operate with the boundary part of the field just completely shut down because Benjamin Morrison is out there. I think everyone is going to have to pick up the pieces to try to make up for the loss of Morrison because I want to make this abundantly clear. Like I have faith in the young cornerbacks. This is not like a Julian Love to Dante Vaughn situation where the drop off is so significant from one player to the next. Like Notre Dame has capable corners that could be really good and Notre Dame could theoretically end up losing Morrison for the first few games of the season and they could still be undefeated. The win-loss record would not be the same. But I just think so highly of Benjamin Morrison that I think that losing him is going to cause a domino effect that is going to affect every other part of the Notre Dame defense. And that is what leads me uh, to my next point, because no matter how 
good I think Morrison is, the pressure on these young guys is going to have to uh, increase substantially knowing that Morrison is going to be out more than what we think he'll be right now. I would say the odds of this happening are pretty low because, again, this is an arthroscopic surgery. As far as we know, it's not like a torn labrum. It's not the Buckner injury or anything like that. So I don't even expect this to happen. There has not been any indication that this is a major surgery. But shoulder injuries, uh, more so than most, have a tendency to lead to more damage down the road. Just think about what Cam Hart dealt with throughout his career. Think about what Thomas Harper dealt with at Oklahoma State before he got to Notre Dame. Like when he arrived on campus at Notre Dame, he had just undergone what I believe was his third shoulder surgery during his time in college. It's just a really unfortunate thing, but that's just how the way the body works. Also, you got to consider Morrison is an extremely physical cornerback. That's what Notre Dame wants in their corners, and I'm not saying it's a bad thing at all. I love that aspect of Morrison. I love having a tough corner, especially with really long arms like he has. He can just really get into dude's chest, frustrate them, and make it a long night. So will this impact his physicality if and when Benjamin Morrison comes back? I don't know. Will he be as good of a player once he comes back if he ends up missing this amount of time? I think that he will. I'm confident that once he does return to the team, he's going to be ready to go. He might not be a you know, clicking on all cylinders, but I have faith that he is uh, a strong enough competitor that he's going to really attack this rehab hard, and he's going to make sure that whenever he does come back from this injury, he's going to be ready to go and ready to, you know, give it a, uh, his all on the field. This last thing I'll say, I honestly thought about not even addressing it, but I've seen it a few times on message boards and even one time in a group chat today, but I think that was mostly a joke. Some people are worried that Morrison is going to sit out the year. I do not see that happening. I know that Morrison is a really good NFL draft prospect. He's going to make himself a lot of money next year. I just don't think he's the type of player that's going to sit out on his teammates um, and really just miss out on this last year of college football. There there have been no signs that it, that is in Morrison's DNA whatsoever, so I would give that a 0.0001% chance of happening because even if Morrison ends up missing an extended period of time. I am fairly confident that we are going to see Benjamin Morrison this fall more games that we aren't. But like anything, when an injury like this happens and there's a lot of unknowns, I think that everyone has to think about, okay, what could happen? You have to investigate all the different options. I'm sure that the Notre Dame coaching staff is doing that. They're all hoping for the same thing that we are, that Benjamin Morrison is able to come back quickly and he's ready to go by the start of the season. But again, you never really know with these injuries and it's an unfortunate reality that we're living in right now with uh, Benjamin Morrison and even Riley Leonard to some extent. But in the end, I think... Benjamin Morrison is going to be okay. I don't think this is going to take him out for that long. And again, one thing that I've stressed over and over again throughout the show is that I think that the younger guys like Christian Gray, Jane Mickey, uh, and he's not necessarily a young guy, but he's a little bit deeper on the depth chart and Clarence Lewis. These guys are all going to benefit. And I think that this is a big opportunity for each and every one of them to step up and really showcase their ability and say, hey, I know that Benjamin Morrison is the guy today, but I'm going to be that the guy next. I'm going to be the next one up. That could be Christian Gray. That could be Jane Mickey. Hell, uh, it could even be Micah Bell. Who knows? He's going to have a much better shot now than he ever has before. So, you know, whenever things like this happen, you never want it to have. It's, it's really unfortunate for the parties involved, but you got to look at the younger guy and say, okay, next man up, as Brian Kelly used to say. And uh, I at least am excited about that, and I'm excited to see how those guys handle it, but still fingers crossed that we get some good news about Benjamin Morrison in the near future. All right, that's going to do it for me today. Thanks again for making Lockdown Irish your first listen of the day. Be sure to subscribe to the show on YouTube or wherever you listen to the podcast and follow the show wherever you use your social media. I'll see you guys tomorrow.